Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. Based on the directives of the National Guard Commander General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, the National Guard units will carry out the Flag of Glory 3 drill tomorrow. General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa said that the National Guard conducts regular mobilisation and command drills to enhance the readiness of its affiliates to answer the call of national duty under various circumstances noting that the drill aims to assess the National Guard's capabilities in all defence operations. He pointed out that such drills reflect the National Guard's presidency efforts to support security authorities in safeguarding the Kingdom's security and progress during the prosperous era of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The National Guard Staff Director, Major General Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Saud Al Khalifa, lauded the theoretical and practical preparations for the drill adding that the exercise will increase the National Guard unit's readiness and efficiency in performing their patriotic duties, as well as in enhancing complementarity with security authorities in the Kingdom. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the achievement of winning the first and second places in the Jordan International Endurance Championship for a distance of 100 kilometres by the Royal Endurance Team as well as the impressive results achieved in the 120km race for the upcoming World Championship, reflects the care and support that Bahraini endurance sport receives from His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness also stressed that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa's support, contributed to obtaining this distinguished achievement. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the Royal Team has achieved many goals in its participation in the Championship, foremost of which is the team's winning first places in the 100km race, which is an affirmation of the successful march of the Bahraini endurance sport in foreign participations. His Highness praised riders Othman Alwadi and Abdullah Janahi for winning the first and second places respectively. He also pointed out that gaining experience for young jockeys and qualifying horses is the main goal for partic participating in the 120km race, whose results will be distinguished by the jockey successfully passing the stages of the race as one of the steps of qualifying horses and their access to the next World Junior Championships, which will be held in Holland early September. His Highness expressed confidence in the capabilities of the Royal Team's riders in achieving positive results that assert Bahrain's status in various external forums. He also praised the outstanding efforts made by the technical and administrative committees of the Royal Team, in addition to the determination of the riders and their keenness to make efforts to achieve positive results. His Highness was keen to follow up in the Championship due direct contacts with the technical and administrative staff of the Royal Team, which contributed to achieving the best results during the Championship. The Ministry of Health announced the extension and rescheduling of the Sputnik vaccination second dose date until the arrival of new batches due to the rescheduling of production and supply operations by the manufacturer. The Ministry stressed that the extension will not affect the efficacy of the vaccine and that it may lead to an increase in effectiveness for some cases. It also said that it communicated with the manufacturing company to provide the necessary quantity and verify shipment delivery dates stressing that it will reschedule the second dose appointment for those who have registered for the Sputnik vaccination through the Be Aware BH app, according to the dates of the new batches scheduled to arrive. 
The Ministry noted that the extension of the period between the first and second doses came according to the recommendations made by the Vaccination Committee at the Ministry of Health through its follow-up and evaluation of the mechanism of COVID-19 vaccinations, noting that the Committee is setting guidelines and second dose appointments based on what was issued by the World Health Organisation and the appropriate intervals between the two doses, which is the responsibility of local medical bodies and ministries of health in each country. The, Min the Kingdom of Bahrain has emerged as the first country in the region to host a centre for regenerative medicine, dubbed by scientists around the world as the future medicine. The Advanced Stem Cell Centre at Arabian Gulf University, AGU, will bring home high-end and effective treatment for diabetes, cancer and heart ailments, among others. To speak more about this, we are joined by Associate Professor and Programme Director of Regenerative Medicine at AGU, Dr Fogue al -Shimari. Hello, Dr Fogue. Hello. Tell us about the progress of establishing the centre here in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the role of the Arabian Gulf University in this regard. Well, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, actually, we are glad to reach this stage. Uh, we have been, uh, you know, studying and designing the new center for regenerative medicine since a while. But uh, uh, we are glad to reach this stage. We are. We received already the uh, the equipment, and maybe in two weeks we will receive the rest of the equipment. We are talking about the state of art. Uh, center. It's going to be unique in uh, all matters uh, from a standards point of view. It's, uh, we have higher standards than most of the center in North America and Europe uh, because we already visited there and we know exactly what's the standard. So we have higher standards. Also, uh, uh, this center has uh, unique uh, equipment that's custom made just to fit uh, some purposes of uh, the AGU uh, regenerative, cent uh, regenerative medicine centers. We, we, as you said in your uh, introduction, it's, uh, regenerative medicine is the medicine of the future, uh, can cure the disease which is usually so difficult to cure by traditional medicine or by modernized medicine. So we are planning now to start maybe in a couple of weeks after validation and calibration of our equipment. Uh, we will start soft opening, but we, will, we are planning now to uh, start with established or uh, approved uh, medication that for some cases we are talking about for the eyes, for joints, for the skin. And also at the same time we will... Uh, 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 we will provide a high-end research in other issue which is under clinical trial, not yet approved, like diabetes and uh, other disease. So uh, uh, this center will serve both for clinical application and for uh, research purposes. And that was the Associate Professor and Program Director of Regenerative Medicine at AGU, Dr. Svog al -Shimri. Thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,041,584 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 890,922 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 8,282 with 1,063 recoveries, 439 registered new cases and 11 deaths. 233 of the new registered cases are expatriates and 205 are contacts of active cases. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. <laughs> 